And uh, I cannot wait to try and guess who these players are. Let's show the viewers what we've got here. Uh, I, there's a little have fun from Admiral Yi Sun Shin. Uh, so I like that. And what in the world? We have Lithuanians versus Mongols Game 1 Arabia. This is going to bring us some, some spice. Ooh, Mongols, the last pick actually being picked for Arabia. And remember, we had strong civilizations left there. Berbers, Mayans, and what else? We had a third, Franks. And he still opted for Mongols? Something I didn't see coming. Also, the colors, man. Everyone's going crazy with the colors here. Master <laughs> of the Templars, purple. I can't say any of the players are really known for picking that. Maybe a few. And then Teal again. So we're going to stick with these colors because I don't think they clash too much. I think they're quite nice. Now, Master of the Templar is Mongols, a sieve that has a scaling bonus and a sieve that if you're going to lame, you might want to pick here. And so MBL confirmed possibly as we have a lamer coming forward, but the boars are never on the front in Hidden Cup. They're always on the backside. So no sheep steal yet for Master of the Templar. Admiral Yi Sun Shin seems to be okay with this situation so far. Ah, not really finding it too cheap. Okay, now he is or picks there. And yeah, indeed, unlikely to be any laming. Although, Master, he's getting close to that boar. Let's see how, let's see if there's hesitation. No hesitation. Game one, big <laughs> tournament. No hesitation. There's a few players that come to mind picking Mongols on Arabia and going crazy with the lames. Chat saying MBL already. Uh, let's, I don't know. There might be some other players we'll see. Um, but. This is something that I think Admiral will have an idea of because Admiral did have that boar scouted. So Admiral's going to try and find that now, looking into the darkness to find the enemy. Mm, but out of line of sight will be tricky for him. Now it's a bit of a guessing game. Will he go more towards the TC? He doesn't even know where the TC is. So, but. Oh, sees it. it. Sees it. Okay, boys and girls, this is crazy. Now you block the boar. And the boar is far enough away from the enemy scout. The boar will go back. You can get hits on the scout. That's great, too. Oh, my God. Admiral Yi Sun called a re and then said, oh, never mind. Master of the Templar says, uh, for real. Admiral says there is no re 11. Master of the Templar says, dot, dot, dot. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is way more than I was expecting to happen here, Neely. What are we witnessing? Okay, so guys, get your scrapbooks out. Who are the guys that are heavily underprepared for $70,000 one we won at Empire's two tournaments? 70,000! 70,000! Should I feel disrespected right now that they didn't remember the rules? Should I be disrespected? Everyone should. Yeah. Every single viewer should be personally feeling disrespected right now by those players. <sighs> personally disrespected. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, we'll go back to the chat here. Master of the Templar was not happy about that. Because Master of the Templar was in the middle of a lame, and then the pause mm -hmm. happened. So, there were restarts in the qualifier, Nilly. No restarts in the main event, which was specified. So, I'm thinking possibly... I know everyone wants to get excited about the Langer being MBL, but it's possible that the Admiral Yi Sun was a player who played in the qualifier and was used to there being a restart. I don't know. But uh, certainly Master of the Templar comes out on top, having stolen that food. On the bright side with Lithuanians, you start with more food. So maybe this is a bit manageable behind this. Crazy. This chat was just hilarious. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously, so, something that we could potentially rule out is that Vivi is one of the two players, right? Yeah, because yeah. that was pretty good English. Unless it's the best mind game ever, and he prepared exactly that dialogue. Yep, after Vivi struggled in the previous Hidden Cups, he's been practicing English behind the scenes, mm. using broken English when communicating with, with people around the scene just to trick us all. Nice. That dedication. You have to love it. Yeah, exactly. And some people read the rules, you know, some people practice English for a tournament, you know, it's just the level that some players bring. And look at this. <laughs> Only with Mongols can you just now be bringing in your second boar. Mm -hmm. Still pigs underneath the TC as well. And it looks like this will be a man at arm opening for Master of the Templar. Looks indeed like it. Two on a gold militia in the queue. On the other side, we did have the double mill approach. Oh, well, that's relatively costly for Lithuanians. Maybe yeah. he could have made something happen with the extra 150 food. I think... 
I think that you have a full HP scout. Why not go home and push your deer in, Nilly? It's literally right in front of your base. Hmm. And Twitch chat was saying, Jordan, sorry to, to get out in front of this, right? Because of the English or whatever. But like, Jordan, the one thing that I always pick up with him, with him is that he's always very alert with his scout. Uh, he does not like to push deer a lot. He always wants to see what the enemy's up to. So maybe something to keep in the back of your mind. He actually didn't see the barracks yet, though. And this could be brutal. Also, it can't be John. John, first of all, reads the rules. And second, he's uh, super polite. That's true. If the other one is doing a mistake, it would be like, no worries, sir. Still That's enjoy true. the game and have lovely game of Age of Empires. We do Good have, luck, have fun. We do have one Canadian in the tournament. And uh, Master of the okay. Templar said A. So maybe maybe this is, um, we're narrowing it down a little bit, but my goodness, again, the scouting was not there for Admiral. And I think he saw the barracks, but didn't expect the militia to come out of it and now reacts to it. Will the stable go up though? The quick wall fails. No, this is so bad. Oh, oh Blitz blocked as well. And great blocking from Master of the Templar. This is, this is some, a player who has really good scout control here. Not that other pros wouldn't do that, but Master of the Templar all over Admiral in game one. Master of the Templar and Master of the Blocks, apparently. That was beautiful. And what are you doing now? He drops an archer range behind this. This is so bad. That's not what he wanted. No. Oh, archer range to deal with this. Get yeah, Nilly, I feel like the deer... Like, now you built a mill on deer that you could have pushed into your TC. It didn't scout the man-at-arms. Obviously, the lane plays a role here. Uh, now the stable's finished. All right. But now you don't really have the food for the scouts. This is brutal. But talk to me about these walls. For, for Master of the Templar. Is this a little uh, too uh, too close to the town center with these walls? This, this is so MBL <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> I'm thinking the same. I think it might be MBL confirmed. It is ironic too, because in the previous set you were saying MBL and now here we are in the next set. We're like, no, 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 this is the real MBL. <laughs> well, we only need a gate at the edge of the map now. Then we really know that it's him, but that one felt... Oh my god, like the laming. Oops, he got housed. It's MBL! He got housed! Game number one, he got pop-capped. This always happens to him. This is MBL, game one. I, like, I've been saying it for years. He's the easiest player to pick up on in Hidden Cups. This is crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. Do we actually watch the rest of the series now I, that we know that it's him? Well, we have to see who wins, Nilly. Come on, oh, it's okay, not okay, just okay, a okay, guessing okay. competition. This is serious. Okay. But yeah, okay. um, you know, I like the approach overall. You know, the what, what's also interesting about picking Mongols for Arabia is it's definitely not what many pros would consider one of the best civs on Arabia. Uh, but it is your final pick. If you take some risks like laming uh, and going aggressive and you get a win, it might be up against uh, a civ that's seen to be stronger overall. So. Mm -hmm. Also, MBL is a guy that doesn't care that much about the Arabia civilization, right? Yep. If we think about like his wild Burmese pick in the Red Bull qualifier and such, trying to make something happen. So ah, it just feels so much. And now it's he is adding skirms. Well, we only need to see some guard towers and or some watchtowers. <laughs> it's the full display. All right. Well, you, know, you saw the range, so you know is aware of that. Gonna come Skirm, Man at Arm, and Scout, and Admiral seems to be very much on the back foot here in this game. Probably realizes this is not good in a lot of different ways, but it's gonna try and hold here, and it, it, I would say it is realistic to hold in this position with good micro, but you might need to pull the villagers into the fight or away from the gold, and yeah, away from the gold they go. Scout very weak, Scout goes down. I don't think villagers will die nearly, but that's still good damage for Master. And normally, in defense is way easier there with Skirm Archer because the men at arms at minute 15 and a half are already very hurt. Yeah. But those didn't take any damage because there were no units on the field. Yeah, that's true. And also, like right now, you can see they're getting value. They're getting great value. And Admiral had a lot of skirmishers, not have many archers. And look at Master try and micro down those archer numbers. I mean, if nothing else, this is just amazing for Master because Master can, can eco and boom at home. Um, just to clarify one thing, because I know there's a lot of new people here. Oh, apparently, I'm missing round of 16 on the scoreboard, which we'll get for game two. But um, house is when you get population blocked. So you can see their pop space here. I'm actually wondering if it's going to happen again here for Master of the Templar. <laughs> Watch, and the house is going to go up by the farms or something. Oh, no, there we go. Thinking about it. 
It's fine. Oh, 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 oh. Cruising in rear barrel. All right. So where do you go from here with Mongols? Like, do you go... You see the enemy has skirms, which is actually kind of dangerous against Lithuanians. Because they have the, uh, the fa- Oh, the splits! Okay, Admiral. But yeah, they're fast, Nili. Uh, do you go into knights with Mongols? Like, wh what's the deal? With this open gold and this unwallable map for Admiral, I think I just go double stable and full knight camel aggression and okay. try to punish Admiral for his bad map. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and Admiral, as to be said, has done a decent job economically behind this. But just doesn't seem to be quite as clean. I uh, did invest into the armor upgrade on the skirmishers and created a second range and created a lot of skirmishers. So all this investment for Admiral or uh, yeah, for Admiral because Admiral's worried and probably should be. But it's just great play for Master to realize I've done enough and go up towards the Castle Age. We have to sell. Admiral is doing a really nice job of defending this one. Like you get your starting scout or starting stable denied and you're still somewhat surviving. Yep. Respect. Yeah. Um, also has to be said, the split micer with the skirms was pretty impressive. Uh, not something that's really necessary when you have the numbers too. And I don't think that it's uncommon for anyone in the top 16 to be able to do simple split micro, but it does bring some names to mind if it starts to get crazier. Uh, crazy walls? on the left and a lot of house walling there but normally while i comment on that i think it makes sense when you wall that far to have the walls be stronger with houses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i like that as well the big problem is if it's only palisade walls there it's more of a warning factor than a real wall because people can easily break it and you can't really re-wall so houses are a great choice but i'll still some palisades mix it okay yeah palisade there we'll see what happens i'm more curious now what admiral does because Admiral sees that stable going up, and if the enemy is adding a stable at this stage, you know that they're probably on the way to Castle Age, and that's a terrifying thought. Like, do you try and wall that gold nilly, or do you just hold that with military? That's a lot of walling to do. Let's see what your opponent is going for first. Does he have any idea? Uh, he sees one stable added at the front and is going back. I oh, think maybe a defensive tower is needed. Another thing MBL is known for is mixing in scouts before the knights. He's done this for years, and it's it's great in this spot to be able to still get some value from your archers by clearing out the skirmishers. It gives you the ability to push out across the map with confidence. He does not see the skirmishers, though. The archers could still get caught out, and the tower will be up for Admiral as he's 90 seconds away from the castle age. Uh-oh, problems. Scouts are coming in. Not the most scary things. Seize bloodlines and the armor on it. Skirm Archer trying to make the defense happen. I think Admiral needs to add Spearman now. It's a tough one, right? Because there's archers out there. I honestly feel like this is, this is a fine spot for Admiral to be in. Because if the scouts would have caught the skirms, the archers could have got more value. But now you have a tower. The crossbowman can't push your gold. And in about 40 set... Well, it's not a great spot. But it's great considering the circumstances, Nilly, and I feel like with the ranged units he has, maybe he can hold off whatever attack comes in. Yeah, but what are Lithuanians transitioning into? Like, you're, you're playing mass crossbows or what, as Lithuanians? Not really where they shine. Yeah, I, I think that's true. It also could be true for Mongols, right? Because they tend to be strong in the early game, and then they have no eco bonus to work with, just like Lithuanians in the mid game. And then they want Mangadai. And... No, I almost said MBL. Oh my god. Master of the Templar <laughs> <laughs> is going to be going for crossbows and booming right now. Um, uh, just need to clarify this in case you don't already know. I also don't know who the players are. So if I do make the mistake in saying there's someone, not because I know. I definitely don't. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Like, Okay, 56 out of 75 pop space. Let's just see... If Master of the Templar is going to prep some houses there, Nilly, as the crossbows engage against the knights. It's really weird how Master, he went too stable opening, Nilly, and he's just now arriving with knights. He really hasn't invested that much in the military. Mm, yeah, I'm a bit surprised as well. Maybe those scouts, yeah, they felt like a good idea against the skirms. One scout might have been enough. Delayed him a bit there. And also adding one extra TC. We, we felt Admiral might be in more problems, right? Yeah. But he's holding quite nicely. Yeah, Admiral also with resources to add a second town center in a bit, so that's doable. Um, I also, as I think about this, I think that it could be a mistake to not take map control against Lithuanians.
because if the Lithuanians get those relics, their knights can be really strong. And I could see something like Cavalier Elite Skirmisher doing well with all that attack against Mongol Post and Power. So we'll see. It is 48 villagers against 44 right now. I'd say Master has the lead, but Admiral could definitely push out. Okay, a name that we didn't mention too much before this. Could Admiral be like someone like Jordan? It feels really controlled, very, um, very defensive. I I think Jordan was my oh Jordan was the one who said there. I mean Admiral was the one who said there's no re. Hmm. Ah yeah okay. Well, he Admiral? responded and said there's no re, so he knew but the Admiral rules. Admiral wanted. Oh. So with Jordan, I always look for like clean, defensive, macro-oriented play, and then I look to see if the English is good. <laughs> And if he's nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, everything, you know, there's a lot of other players too, but based on what we've seen here, I think Jordan wouldn't be the worst guess for Admiral. And Jordan, of course, had to qualify too and has been playing very well as he's been back. Getting relic number one now is Admiral Yi Sun Shin. 3TC here by Master, now transitioning into other range units, trying to play the really long game. Also, maybe some Winchester feeling here. We had some wild Sith picks yeah. for Admiral. So that could be something. And also Ballistics before the extra TCs could be an indicator. <sighs> I it's still tough. don't know. Game slowed it down a bit. Both players trying to set up their eco for the long game. Yeah, but Master's going... He's getting chain barding for the Knights as he's looping around with them. Also, upgrading to Elite Skirm at home. So this is big investment. Uh, and, and nearly, I actually had forgotten, it was actually Admiral who requested the re, so based on your theory, maybe it wouldn't be Jordan, as Jordan might know the rules. Hmm. Um, uh, honestly, during World Cup, we didn't know that there were restarts either. <laughs> That's true! I remember casting with you, and you're like, wait, there's restarts? We didn't? Okay. Well, um, personally, I'm I'm quite happy to, to have done away with the restarts for the main event. It was something we debated for the qualifiers, too, but restarts, in my opinion, should not be something you can use to bail yourself out of a bad position, and that's exactly what it would have been. Master of the Templar actually found reward for the lane because of no restart, and the knights just run in here. I don't think they're accomplishing too much except for distracting Admiral and keeping Admiral at home right now. Yeah, maybe, just maybe, the 1 HP knight maybe could do something later yeah. if there are massive attacks at the front, maybe trying to move to the wood line, but that one clearly stopped. And on the restart thing, Maps got so much better as well. Yeah, true. People, like, the map scripting, people behind the scenes did such a great job over the last multiple years, even, that we don't need this, like, I remember best of five show match, two restarts each player. Yeah. And, and back then, there were massive delays. You'd have, like, a six-minute spec delay, and then you get into the game, and it's restart. Yeah, it was crazy. Well... I'm happy where we're at. Obviously, viewership's been insane today. Closing it on 30,000 for day one. Thank you, everybody. Bro, Harrow, you're going crazy with gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you for all the primes, of course, today. Thank you to the bear who was with us for a short time. Oh, that's sad. Um, but, Nilly, do you think that Admiral's going to be surprised to see this much military from Master? Uh, he didn't see the army for quite some time. Is transitioning into knights, so he won't really mind seeing that amount of skirmishes. I think Master needs to add in some more camels here. Mm. Yeah, and they see a villager coming forward from Admiral. Maybe that's for a siege push. And keep in mind, one relic already, about to be two for Lithuanians. You get plus one attack on your knights per relic collected. And Master's got this force, but Master is heading over to counterattack. When Admiral's in the middle of the map. Oh, but we mentioned earlier, House Wall, 900 HP, buying quite some time. Wow. TC behind this. I don't mind this defense. Honestly, maybe some walls behind. Uh, could, could this army be trapped? I think so. Yeah, well, with a big patrol here, you're going to have all the extra attack. You have the crossbows, too. The crossbows have ballistics nearly. There's even a hill here. I think Admiral is going to allow this to happen. Admiral wants this to happen. He says, yes, let's fight. Ballistics for both players, so could be a good fight indeed. Breaking through those houses won't help too much. Now the Skirm's kind of out of position. Admiral taking the fight. Wow, big fight here, guys. Big fight. And this might end up changing the game. If the crossbowmen are able to get picked off here by these Skirms, I can see Master with reinforcements doing something. There's actually another force on the other side, nearly, and their knights are going in to raid. Will Admiral react? Admiral reacts to it! 
Great reaction there, and great cleanup from Admiral. The skirms will disappear. And the thing is, since we have the crossbow production, those TCs actually have plus two attack. So the knight's taking quite some reasonable damage. Monk did die. Knights for the defense. This was a nice clear up for our Admiral. Exactly. And, and you know, now you look at the forward siege workshop. That could mean that more rams could come out and there could be a real push here. You see more stables from Master of the Templar, who started off strong in this game, but was not aggressive enough in early Castle Age. I think this is a fine mix of that nearly but also the fact that Admiral has come to play in this tournament. This is a very, very good player. Oh, we didn't have enough stables. Look at that. Look at the production of the stables, Tristan. What about it? <gasps> no way. Two knights queued and then four camels, three camels, and then nothing out of the forward stables. What on earth is this? This is, this is probably why the numbers are lacking for Master of the Templar. Oh, this is single QBL. At its best. Oh, not really producing enough camels there. More villagers being sent forward. Skirm's not really benefiting uh, be too much. That could be a castle and a game-winning castle at that, nearly. Three, four relics collected for Admiral Yi Sun. So the knight should own here. Plus there's a monk to get conversions. I think Admiral's gonna castle drop this area. And if the castle goes up, what on earth can Master of the Templar do without those two golds? Well... <laughs> Mongol Pikeman? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you really had to think about that. Look at that castle. That's how bad the castle is going to have to be. And honestly, that castle could still get denied. Also, the scout was attacking villagers on the TC over there. What a crazy, crazy way to start off this series, Nilly. Um, let's see. Will the castle go up, actually? Uh-oh. Camel numbers are getting <gasps> good. You're kidding me. The knights weren't attacking the camels. You're kidding me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me this is going to get denied. Is this doubt? 80%? 85%? Oh. 40 CZ. 40 CZ at home behind this could easily be doubt. <laughs> it could be doubt. Is it doubt versus MBL? You know, they have... If we're going to use those names... Dow and MBL have faced each other in Hidden Cup before. I think it was Hidden Cup 2, round 1, or maybe it was the quarters. I think it was round 1, and it was a best of 5, and MBL won that one 3-1. A little bit of flashback there. Um, there was a lot of laming, and there was a lot that went down. This castle sits here at 90% completed. Nilly, is there anything more that Master of the Templar needs to do right now? What do you think about walling up that castle just to make sure it never goes up? Mm, he's going for the siege workshop or uh, the castle. Look at that. He's not even finishing the castle at home. Look at that castle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? What's, What's the... happening? 99.64%. I mean, he's probably so focused on everything else and he doesn't need the castle. But it's his self-imposed doubt castle. And here comes Admiral now with villagers. And Admiral will clear up the camels. This is kind of what I expected the first time. We'll finish that castle. And even though that castle was denied, Nilly, as you said, the eco is just so good for Admiral that it just always has this feeling that Admiral's going to close this out. And Teal only did send three villagers. Wait a second. This is so ballsy as well. For a second, Master of the Templar had 50 villagers on stone. It's his 36 right now. Oh, maybe double click. Oh, that was a double click. Look at how they, they're mess farmers. Oh, man. Oh, we double clicked. Oh, man. Oh, this eco is looking poor, man. Master Still of the Templar stone. started off strong. Now it's falling apart. And Admiral, four relics. There's even a fifth out there. Ten plus five attack on these knights. Camels are supposed to counter knights, but when you have this much attack, yeah, I don't think so. And Admiral Yi Sun Shin might not have known the rules about the restarts, but gets the victory. And what a game to start off this series, Nilly. Wow, the Ethereans just played so nice. I think Master of the Templar had such a good spot. Just overbuilt knights here. I think just four opening knights and then going camels exclusively might have been the better choice. And if you look at what the what the situation was, we could pull it up with the statistics. Um, I really feel as though the prioritization of military was not there for Master of the Templar. Yes, you want to boom with Mongols and get to a stronger tech later. But if you look at the Castle Age times, what happened here was Master of the Templar went two stables with the faster Castle Age and 
he didn't even produce that many nights. I think he had three, and then he was immediately on the second town center. So he switched into the boom, and then this is after Teal already felt like he was on the back foot. And uh, man, did he was he able to recover here after getting lamed. After the awful opening, nearly the stable was denied. Went into the early archery range. How on earth did that happen? Um, I, I actually have a highlight from this one, guys. We're going to go back to a, a moment that ended up, I think, showing us what was going to happen next. Is they're going to highlight many more moments throughout this, but thanks to Capture Age. Here we go. We'll go back to this. Like, clearly, Master of the Templar felt confident enough to fight in this instance, Nilly, and ended up getting trapped, which then led to the confidence from Admiral to push forward with everything, and eventually, you know, of course, fail with the castle and finish it. What a lovely engagement. The crossbow still the full time on the hill. Maybe could have sent one, two more knights on the skirms. How long they're surviving. Gets the re conversion as well, though. Yeah. I just feel like, you know, I don't think Master really expected there to be this much military out. He probably felt as though he could just go skirms and be fine. Cool. Uh, full confidence to push forward there. And it just didn't work out. And we know what happened after that. Uh, but shout out to Capture Age for for this and an eventual capture age pro if you guys want to use this at home uh but nilly it is time for game number two no sorry to speculate on game number two before we hop in okay so it is now the home map of master of templar he has gold rush and mud flow do we have a prepared strategy for mud flow most likely not otherwise you pick it first right so i would assume just try to play Gold Rush and try to play a more controlled game. Something like Mayans, Berbers, feels very reasonable. Probably okay. Mayans, I would say. Okay, well, that's a great thing to talk about, but probably not we'll, what we'll be talking about because I can see game number two. We're going to hop into game number two. They've kept their colors, and it will actually be on Mudflow, and I cannot wait to unveil this for the viewers. This is a map that we have not seen... A lot publicly there was a lot of behind the scenes testing going on with our team but 20 seconds in to game number two and admiral is playing as the Khmer nilly I'll, I'll let you talk about that in a second and then we have master of the templar playing as the franks uh there's two berry bushes that you can take on this map you start with uh dorado next to your town center for food and there's also two rhinos and there's also some water buffaloes there's that amphibious terrain where all the big wood lines are in the middle what are your thoughts on how Khmer plays out on a map like this? Well, as you mentioned, it is impossible to wall around this starting area. So normally we want to have our farms around mills or the TC. They are the most protective areas. Yep. But Khmer have the bonus. They don't need to drop off their food. So you can basically build the farms anywhere. And therefore, you can design your base very defensively and can just farm at wild areas, something that you love, Tristan. Thank you for that, Nilly. As if people needed a reminder there. You know, Admiral, after getting lamed in the first game, has run forward awfully early here to see what the enemy is up to. Uh, and could try and lame as well, but I think this is just scouting to see where the enemy is. And yeah, Nilly, I, I was with you. I felt as though Khmer would be the number one just because of the farms. But we, we had tested versions where there was one boar, we had tested versions where there was one berry bush, and we ended up just saying, you know what, have all uh -oh. the food. Villager. There's a villager in the map, center of the map. What? What? Wait a second. Admiral's sending a villager across the entire map and wants to wall in the berries? Huh. I mean, this is clearly a strategy that, oh, you know what? It's to shoot the rhino. That's a nice little move right there, Nilly. And you know what? You know, considering that Admiral is Khmer, you're really worried about the health of that villager. You could just build a house forward and hop inside of it. Another bonus that Khmer could make use of. So Master of the Templar couldn't get a win in the first game with the lame. And Admiral says, ha ha, I'm going to take your food now. <laughs> okay, good job there. Something really need to see though. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, the rhino blocked the house foundation. That was funny, and this will get it's real scrappy soon in a second. What were you going to say, Nilly? 
Uh, it's important that you wall in the rhino now so that your opponent can't really build a mill around it yeah. and then he can still get that food but yeah didn't really get the time for it yeah i feel like you could just make a mill there and then take the food anyways there's still going to be hundreds left now you've got an exposed villager too so this isn't i mean it's a strategy right it's something that you can attempt but i don't think this is necessarily going to worry master of the templar too much uh, let's see if the micro is here for both of them. They have their scouts around. A great micro for Master of the Templar. That villager's going to die. Ooh, love it. Honestly, I'm getting more and more MBL vibes again. Yeah. Like, yeah. did react properly against the lame. Great micro there. No overreaction. Really solid play. Okay. Uh, oh, man. This boar lore, though, or this rhino lore. What was that? Now when villagers have food, they have to go all the way back to the TC. That is... That's brutal stuff there, Nilly. I don't know if the tree was in the way or what, or maybe Admiral was focused elsewhere, but <laughs> hurt to see that. Uh, luckily, he has 250 food in the bank, so doesn't need to drop any food. He just needs to drop it after they oh, basically collected all their 35 mm -hmm. food. So it's one drop-off in the second board. It's not as bad, but yep. it still looks pretty ugly. Yeah, um, <clears throat> people saying this is Doubt versus MBL right now. There's some big names coming to people's minds. I'm, I'm ready to see more games, though. It's 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 going to depend, I think, on how some of the other maps are played for me and my guests. Remember, viewers, that on uh, after each set, we have an extension below. And you could guess right now if you want to, I believe. Where you can guess who you think the players are. Also, when players finish a set, they have to tell the admin who they think they played against. All that's revealed at the end. And then one more thing. On the final day, you can submit your guesses for all 16 players. And we're giving away prizes to the people who get all 16 right, which I think was just five people last time, Nilly. Ooh. Okay, five people. That's a lot. Because it sometimes it gets really wild, right? Mm. Especially people that kind of got eliminated in the first round. Three ones, three zeros. Yeah. Getting those right is, is a nice achievement. I was, I was surprised because we had a lot of people watching and submitting. And uh, the only pro player, and there were many who submitted... But the only pro player who submitted and got all 16 correct last year was Velez, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, small side note before we start talking about the crazy fights that are going to start here is that uh, also we give an extra $100 to the person that is uh, that hides their identity the best. And in Hidden Cup 3, that was Doubt, <laughs> so, uh, which was great. So, uh, And it's not like it was the troll voting either because as we see a dock block from Admiral... Uh, you do have to guess one name for every hero. Ah, so if Viper drops out in the first round, he gets an additional $100? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think if anyone who's considering someone's top four, top five drops out in the first round, they'll probably get the 100 bucks because I don't think many people are going to, uh, to foresee that. But with random seating, you never know. And Nilly, Admiral, he seems to have a different approach. I know a lot of the testing games, players were going scouts, He's actually gone for a dock and galley opening. Interesting. Yeah, we have seen so many. Like, especially you're not really using the Khmer bonus here, yeah. right? Like, you, where are your farms? You're Khmer. You should be floating 400 food now. Yeah, this is pretty wild, man. You know, everything about this start has shown me that Admiral has practiced this a lot. And Master now is going for scouts. So how do scouts perform against galleys? <laughs> Not too well, but actually spearmen perform reasonably well against galleys. All right, well, there's a spearman there, master of the And against Templar. scouts. Oh, that's a big deal right there. Admiral loses the scout. I guess he wants to make a galley behind the wood line, but it's just going to be one single galley. That's it. Mm, yeah, demo not an option. Sitting behind the wood line is actually quite nice. Mm -hmm. You don't have great wood lines on the outside. Yep. And how do you really deal with that? Well, Maybe think... four scouts? Ah, oh. he built the dock himself. Okay, so he's he's going to adapt and send two to gold so he can make a fire, I guess. And just take the dock, take the wood. And now look at the Admiral. Admiral's walling a lot. Man, this is... This is really fascinating. It, we have two completely different strategies here. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Those are massive walls. Obviously, they help you in the long game as well, but that's quite, quite some mm. investment. And, well, now some spearmen. It still feels like Master Templar should have lots of map control with the scouts. Yeah, and here's the thing. You have to wall completely around everything. You can't wall to the TC because there's no farms next to the TC. So you can't pull villagers into your TC instantly to shoot arrows. Like, there's nothing to stop scouts from running around this. And I think that Master of the Templar should realize that. There's actually a hole here nearly. Oh, big moment. Admiral's walling so much, and Admiral probably will not notice this. Oh, well, two scouts can maybe be dealt with. Villagers can jump into houses. So that villager at the right-hand side should be fine. Oh, but look at that. Attack from the side between the house and the wow. villager so that the village is pushed away. That was intentional and so smart. Just many of the small things the high-level players do, nearly. Great call there, and the scouts will now move along. And more scouts could come in, of course. And now, Admiral will have spearmen, but Admiral thought the farmers would be safe. Not so much anymore. Oh, <laughs> and that's a big problem. Maybe building a house next to the farmers there could have been an option. Goes for more walls. So tough to control this map. Admiral now dropping a stable himself. Yep, thinking that scouts are a good idea. This is what I mean, right? There's no villagers to hop into the TC. And so Master just showing some great patience here and Not could jumping get... into the houses! What's uh, happening? That's true. Well, maybe the spears were there and maybe there was some confidence from uh, Admiral. Okay. But Nilly, what's fascinating is how much the players have had on food. Because Master had made two mills on the berries, he's probably almost finished with them. Yeah, he's almost finished with all of them. And then he switched into farms while doing that. Whereas Admiral still got... A, a full area of berries over here and i don't think adding six farms is that great compared to having a few villagers on berries early mm, yeah especially compared to frank's berries right mm -hmm. so going for that one quite nicely i think a second mill was desperately needed uh, it's so tricky to play those games out right because that game plays out differently if you face bulgarians franks khmer japanese all the potential civilizations here yeah so getting in the massive practice games and then like you open with a dog, you suddenly your opponent is not opening with a dog and then it's a completely new game. It's tough to get real good practice into all scenarios here. Do you think that that fact right there, the fact that players probably are practicing with a couple people and the fact that these games were, this map was never seen at a high level before, do you think that that is what is producing these different styles? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's something that makes this so beautiful and i absolutely love how we see people adjusting to it and that's why we honestly see viper performing so so well in hidden cup one till three right mm -hmm. because he's so good at adjusting to wild situations speaking of so good these scouts are still running around and a nice little snipe there from master of the templar his scout control is great everyone could do this but the dedication there you know i'm still really feeling those mbl vibes a little bit um, but of course, you know, some other names might come to mind with their snipes, with their doinks, as we call it here. Um, more docks for Master of the Templar, and it feels like a, a natural switch. We forgot the blacksmith to go up, by the way, so he's scrambling Whoopsie. that down. Yeah. And that feels like a full water transition now, right? Maybe. Only one stable, now sends three on stone. Why are we sending three on stone with Franks? Maybe this map is just so much about, like, adapting to awkwardness that you just you think about getting a castle up in the middle at some stage in castle age i mean you're on the way right now but here's the problem admiral has more navy admiral has scouts and spearmen coming forward master of the templar might never make it to the next stage look at this it feels like the tower should still go up we still have some army production i think just mixing in some demos tristan a demo would be good. Demo is going to come out. I'm looking at the villagers here. I'm looking at the tower. There's so much to focus on. This is ridiculous. It really does seem like both of these players, some names that many people might be screaming in chat at the moment, but also players who probably are in different corners when it comes to preparing for the tournament. Still waiting to see this demo hop out. I, I think that that's what Master I... of the Templar really needs. Why isn't he doing it? It should be perfect hit, no? I don't know. Maybe focused elsewhere. Oh, you! That's your fault, Nilly. I was. Nothing happened. He deleted. Oh, and there was I... no big demo hit that C90 missed. No, no, no. All good. All good. I was ready to show the viewers, and then I had to think of a reason 
that he might not have been doing it, and I looked away for a split second. All right. <sighs> All right. Thank you. T90 the observer set. during Red Bull was so bad. <laughs> Give me all the action. If T90 was controlling the camera, we would have seen what everything. What is this voice? <laughs> what, what is this voice right now? That's uh, a typical Twitch setter. Is, no? that, is that what they sound like? Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. At least mine. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe yours are younger on your channel. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Are you implying that people watching right now lack maturity, Nilly? No. Okay. I'm just... just... Just making sure, you know. Don't want to get. Okay. We don't want the minus 7k emote to be used just yet. And you know, Nilly, I think we're finding ourselves in a familiar position with Master of the Templar. Faster Castle Age, but uh, switching into that eco rather early. You see that TC? Not making a lot of knights, just prioritizing fire galleys. But wait a second. Four villagers coming forward. What are they up to? Maybe a tower there at the front while the demo takes out some spearmen? That was sick. Yeah, I mean, I think he probably did not mean for his villagers to path this way. But yeah, he's probably trying to tower the woodline, but the house walling from Admiral was really smart to block that off. Technically, look at the stone. Oh yeah. no, he's building a tower. Okay, okay. I thought for a moment <laughs> he could consider buying 300 stone and build a castle because it's so much cheaper with Franks. Mm, okay, I could see it. So it's important to note that all the stone is in the middle on this map. So the stone is extremely vulnerable, and then if you want gold, you have to expand to the outer rings. I shouldn't say all the stone. Sorry, you do start with the stone at your base, obviously. But Master of the Templar taking early control with the fire galleys with the faster castle age, towering to take control of the middle, and then booming on two TCs. I'm really liking Master Spot. Yeah, nice macro behind this one, full aggression, and yeah, just plays this map so nicely. And Khmer Village just don't really Ooh. know where to go. <laughs> There was a hole and the fires came in. Oh, that's so brutal. And he's also got a galley there. And Admiral just taps out nearly. He wants he wants to be done with this map. Oh, what a nice play. And that against Khmer. It just felt that the one dock then being open was a bit too greedy. I think you needed more houses, maybe something more on land. It just felt like Admiral was trying to cut too many corners, and yeah. once the scouts are in, it didn't look pretty. I mean, look at look at the style, right? There's a lot of maps where players wall and wall comfortably. I don't think this is this is that map. Master of the Templar stayed open, even had to deal with that lame, didn't really make many walls at all, and then ended up taking control with the force. And I think water control is important on this map. I don't know how important it is yet, but I think that opening with scouts with all that food makes the most sense for your economy and then maybe switching into water just like master of templar did is the meta mm -hmm. yeah very much feels like it maybe a civilization that doesn't heavily rely on wood could maybe do something on the outside maybe something like mayans could work but i don't see them too strong at the opening is it weird to you that that admiral opened up with something so bizarre or do you think that admiral had probably tested this he wasn't confident enough to pick it as his home map, but he had probably tested this before and had that work. Maybe against other civilizations. Let me see, because Master Templar, although he was minus one boar, 1030 feudal age timing, then got the scouts out quite nicely and a reasonable castle age timing behind mm -hmm. this. Maybe Admiral was overwhelmed by the strengths of Franks. Maybe. All right. So... Something to remember throughout Hidden Cup, for those that are going to be here with us, and I know many of you will. Thank you for calling off work, by the way, and being sick, <clears throat> or putting in vacation days, or, or ruining your sleep schedule, whatever you're doing to be here. But um, we've seen so many instances in Hidden Cup where two different players try the same strategy in different sets. So if we see someone go Khmer and try that opening, either today or tomorrow, it might be Admiral Yi Sun Shin's practice partner, or one of the many practice partners. Okay. Great way to sum up that game there, I think, Nilly. And now we have to talk about Admiral's preparation with one of his maps. Uh, we have Islands and High Tides. Now, Islands is a very divisive map in our community. I think there's many people who are like, oh, I hate it. And many people are like, woohoo, we love it. But... That's exactly what they sound like, by the way. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. The big, I, heard, I heard it. The big takeaway when it comes to islands in a hidden cup is just the fact that 
a small percentage of people at the high level might prefer it. Would you agree? Mm, well, th there's simply people like MBL who love their letter grind, who love playing Arabia over and over again. And then there are some people, like I would say the GL group, for example, they don't mind to mix it up. And they're pretty happy with playing unconventional maps that obviously aren't like in every single tournament. I know that we had major 1v1 tournaments heavily skipping on massive amount of water maps. So... I think experience could come in quite handy here. And some people that aren't playing at the top for too long might struggle a bit. I would think someone like maybe the less could be falling behind there. Okay. These are the names that come to mind when I think dominant on islands and have picked islands in either the qualifier or previous Hidden Cups. Dogal. Dogal beat Viper in Hidden Cup 3 semifinal with the sick islands play. So mm -hmm. Dogal's mm -hmm. one. Um, Vinchester actually has been playing insane on islands. Uh, throughout the oh, qualifiers really? so that's one that, that would not have come to mind a couple months ago but does now um i think viper as well is one that has to be said um mm -hmm. and then tato is probably the fourth yeah yeah so a lot of people now think oh jordan jordan picked it yeah he picked it but i think that was against caput who yeah. didn't look too prepared on it before. Correct. So I think that was more of a pick against Capwatch than Jordan really thinking, okay, this is my go-to home map. But like back in 2013, when Jordan was at the tippity top, he was picking islands a lot. So that maybe that's not a bad shout there. Um, anyways, mm -hmm. it will be islands and we'll get to see how they execute, Nilly, and let's go. Game number three. All right, so uh, I'm excited. But I'm going to be saying that a lot. I mean, how could we not be excited? 15 seconds in here to game number three. The score is 1-1. Do you think this series could possibly go the distance to game number five, Millie? Mm, makes a lot of sense, right? The games look pretty close. Game number one could have gone either way. And now the prepared home map, Italians, Portuguese, pretty even. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know why not. Okay, so... We talked about it a lot in the qualifiers, but there's been a few weeks since. I want to I want to hear your opinion on this Civ matchup. How has Portuguese shaken up the scene as far as Watermed is concerned? Hmm. Well, typically it was only two civilizations that were viable on islands. If we think back to NSC3, Hidden Cup 3, it was Italians and Vikings. And suddenly Portuguese... Well, you have a caravel that is good against longboats. Mm -hmm. You have more HP and tiny bit cheaper fire galley against Italians. Sunday, I feel a bit like a counter. Problem for them is no eco upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's such an interesting one for me. Like, Italians were the go to last year, Vikings being the other one you mentioned. I personally think that Italians are the better water sieve. But there's a point where you start to struggle if it gets to imp, because in the back of your mind, you're thinking the Portuguese can make the Fatoria, which gives you a trickle of resources. And when you're producing nonstop, you quickly run out of wood and gold on this map. Um, we do have the neutral islands in the middle, uh, a place where you should not make archery ranges, but also we can take control if you have the water. So it's not just a, a matter of sitting back I feel like there's been a lot of situations where players have killed the Portuguese player if the Portuguese player tries to play passive, but also, um, you know, they, they've maybe camped a little too much, Nilly. Taken the resources, but not pushed Portuguese. I think you really have to have in the back of your mind, kill, 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 before I'd say the hour mark. Didn't we have the Zupi game where exactly that happened? Yep. Oh, that was so painful. Yeah, I remember you were about to play your set, actually in round one and you were in twitch chat watching that zoopy poor zoopy he's probably watching and hates us bringing this up all the time it's like a reoccurring nightmare but uh i think he had 80 or 90 military against 30 and he just refused to go into cannon galleons it was painful and then that horrible fight at the end and portuguese simply with three vittoria generating so many resources for his opponent there and got the defense happening. So, Admiral, by the way, the dock at the right hand side, more on the aggressive side, Master of Templar, very defensive approach. Okay, so I, I want to focus on the boar for Master of Templar because I have not seen a single time where this player has weakened the boar with a TC. 
And in the boar video, now again, take that boar video with massive grain of salt. But in that, there were there were like three or four players who almost never did it in all the recorded games I watched. Let's see. So many players would weaken the board with the TC here. Nothing. We said MBL. MBL was on the list of players who rarely does that. If it, like, Actually, I didn't see a single rec where he did it. So just something to keep in mind. And maybe if he's not confident on water, which is what I would say about someone like MBL, maybe it's back talking to a transport ship, Nilly. Also, players have a better idea of who they might be playing as well than we will have. And sure. maybe they, someone had an idea, okay, this could be MBL. And then picking islands against MBL could be an option. Also, look at the confidence of Master of Templar. Backdog with Italians. Could this maybe be a fast castle? Well, that was the next thing that was going to come to mind. Is there was a build that actually Tato used to do all the time. I think he even did it in Hidden Cup 3. Where you use Italians, you go back dock, and you go fast castle. The enemy goes fast feudal to kill you. And then you just go boop, front dock it, and snipe all their fishing ships. So... This, well, of course, we could speculate over something as simple as killing a boar, is not something that I would really attribute to MBL, honestly. Yeah, neither would I. Neither would I. Interesting move indeed. And yeah, that's going to be a fast castle play. Hmm. Lots of villagers on wood here. Long queue. Four on berries. The question is, do we see more docks in the back later on, or is it the Tato approach that you just mentioned with the front docks later on? So there was a time where uh, Islands was like in a ranked queue, and it still happens from time to time. And I had so many bans that I could never also ban Islands. <laughs> so I just said, okay, you know what? I'm going to have to play this now. And I tried to learn that Tato build. And it's click up on... Well, this is pretty much it, actually. It, I, except I think he would go five fishing ships as opposed to four. And they'd go up on like 28 or 29 pop. And you should be able, with all the food pushed in from the deer, to go up to Castle Age pretty easily with the Italians. So do you think Admiral's going to open with, with galleys or fires here? Mm, typically, you want to open fire galley simply be, you, because you don't know how long the distance is. 1v1 fire galley wins against the galley. Only tricky is if we get to like those 10 galley numbers, 10 galley just completely shred Okay, 10 fire galleys. So to break this down for the viewers, uh, I know there's many new people out there. Hi, new people. The idea behind Teal's build is to streamline most everything onto... Uh, wood and gold to get as much navy out as possible whereas master of the templar is hiding the fishing ships from any aggression that come out on water and is going to try and keep them working for as long as possible and then build new docks to get upgraded fires to then snipe the enemy fish um you think that maybe even the fact that master of templar still isn't in feudal age should give admiral an indication of what's going on here absolutely if your opponent is not in feudal age before like 10 minutes it, it's obvious that they're fast castling or at least doing like six fishing ship back and trying to go for mass galley as okay. the defense. But this is always a very defensive play. And as you can see, Admiral, he has lots of villagers on food. He knows what's up. All right. Yeah. Now, I, I kind of like the, the transfer there. Adding more fishing ships after realizing that. Uh, sending villagers onto your pigs, your deer, also your berries now. Now a market, I think that Admiral will probably sell all that stone nilly and maybe buy some food to try and go up. That market is pretty early, but so far, I mean, I can't see why people wouldn't do this more frequently. This is really working out for Master of the Templar. Well, you're losing your fish. Your opponent can boom a bit more. It will take you quite some time. And you're extremely vulnerable to landings, right? Mm -hmm, Just true. think about it. The forward archer range, where did you scout? then you are late against the fire galley. So okay. if Admiral was landing and trying to play water at the same time, you're just dead. I feel like, like, let's say this is Tato and Tato's out there watching and we've called him MBL thus far. I feel like Tato might be slightly offended by that. <laughs> he, he, will be gig he will be giggling and like, ah, oh, those fools pretending to be professionals. They had no idea. <laughs> uh, this, this is a really good build order. This build right here, is going to put Master of the Templar in Castle Age in a minute. And also, he has enough navy out where I think he can keep some of his fishing ships alive. 
And Admiral's gone for what I would say is the meta for a lot of people, but not necessarily what you should always do. I think the island's meta really has yet to be figured out, Nilly. Well... Yeah, obviously some balance changes there are helping out. Italians got nerfed and we had Portuguese getting some smaller buffs as well. So, yeah, let's see. I think we might even see some more Koreans in the main event as well, especially yeah. if the drafts are getting longer. Little surprised to see Master hasn't pulled these fishing ships back. That's a bit sloppy if you ask me. The enemy does have more fishing ships working right now. But I think they could have been pulled back over to the left side, or maybe not because of that fire. But oh, blocking, blocking so nicely. Oh, beautiful, beautiful there. Maybe if Admiral can hold with a few demos here, nearly this strategy won't work. I mean, you've got fishing ships working. Admiral's economy should be much stronger. Master of the Templar, at least if this was Tato, would just be trying to snipe fishing ships. Even forgetting about enemy numbers is fine here. Uh, sniping the fishing ships and then turning it into a land boom is what you would typically see. Uh, let's see about the demos. So far, it is one fishing ship left against six. Need to run quite a bit. And it feels like Master is getting some reasonable damage out here, though. Yeah, reasonable damage still 40 seconds away from upgrades is Admiral. It's a little funny to see Admiral Yi Sun Shin here, you know, playing on water. Of course, Admiral is known for his water prowess. Such a sick, not even hero in the game, but such a sick story to Admiral Yishun, uh, Sun Shin's life, sorry. <laughs> um, but anyways, what a these... battle. Let's see, repair is not in time. And well, now lots of demos in the queue for Master of Templar. Hmm. All right. So now the fishing ships are going down and this is a pretty even game. You do have a few more. Oh, the other ones could go down too. Great play from Master of Templar. And yeah, in the end, I think he'll be satisfied with this, but it doesn't mean that any player has a massive lead here. It's pretty close. Isn't that the moment where we pick up the economy stats and see how many resources they got? And there you really see how far ahead Admiral is. Had those fishing ships earlier, 500 more resources gained for him. Yep. I'm going to show this fight here nearly because I did miss a demo already. So we're going to make sure we see this one and... Honestly, could have been better there, but uh, Demo still lands for Master of the Templar, and I think Demos are going to swing these fights, Nilly. Especially when you get close to the enemy dock, you have to be really cautious. Oh, massive fight. So tough to properly micro there, and yeah, now going back, but another Demo coming. And the water micro could have been better for Admiral so far, but could have also been way worse. Economically, we already have a second TC going up or up for Admiral. But maybe it's Master of the Templar investing more and more into water as more demos come in from both of them, actually. Ooh. I'm holding my breath. Oh, man. One for one with the demos. Man, Master of the Templar sending so many demos out. This is crazy. <laughs> it's hard to cast these moments because we don't know what's going to happen. But here come the demos. This is crazy. There's so many to micro against and it could change the game. Almost looks like with these demos, it's still going to be 50-50, Nilly. I have no idea what's really happening here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird and it feels like both players are ending up with nothing. Then most of the time, the player with the better economy actually wins the game. Yeah, and, and that would probably be Admiral. You have the fishing ship still working. Like I, have to, I can't even check and look at the eco layouts right now because of the demos and not wanting to miss anything. But I'll quickly do that. Yeah, you've got two TCs for Admiral. And he doesn't have that much on food. And uh, now the second TC is just going up for Master. So, Yeah, but Master, where, where is he getting the food from for villager production? He has three on berries right now. That's about it. Yeah. Has the food in the bank, thankfully. But I think there's concerns for Master because Master is not even ahead on water. And so the Portuguese player gets a lead on Eco. And if they can get to imp faster than Italians, or even, even with Italians, that's where Italians can start to struggle just a little bit. And normally, that is one of their bonuses, right? It's cheaper for them to advance to the next age. <sighs> okay. Some time to breathe here. And, well, fishing ship count is down to one. Oh, Admiral adding some new ones. Oh, demo. Boom. Okay, I don't know if it was really worth 
I don't know if it was really worth following that demo the whole time, but I was expecting something crazy to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, how sick would that have been if there was a massive shot there? Do you, do you switch up how you play this if you're these players, or is this just the water meta? You just boom, add fishing ships, add eco, and try and best the opposition. Well, Italians typically play as a bit of a lower economy approach, but Master of Templar, now one single village on food. That's one getting shorefish. He will soon have three TCs. The idle TC type will just skyrocket for Master of the Templar pretty soon. He won't True. have any food. I just don't think... So, okay, the build itself to get to Castle Age seemed good, right? But execution-wise, with the economy behind it, I think I can rule out Tato. I could be wrong, but to have three TCs with so little on food is a problem here. Maybe someone who, who liked the build because it's a bit high risk, high reward, but doesn't necessarily feel comfortable on these water maps, man. Especially the demos. Like To make this many demos tells me that maybe Master does not feel too confident. Uh, typical player. Also, I would see Nikov being a bit better with the demo. Micro absolutely love him with that one. And another one, one for one. Uh, there's there's too many demos to focus on right here, but I mean these are if you go one for one against fires, it's better for the fire player because the fire still remains and it can be used and he and repaired and maybe a little desperate for Master of the Templar right now. Still potential though to overwhelm. Both players need to be on top of things when it comes to production and micro nilly. Oh, <gasps> so tough to see who comes out ahead. What's happening? Oh, that was a demo. Yeah, it killed two, weakened one. The demo's just landing better for Admiral here. And you're right about the, the TC idle time, by the way. It was at 30 seconds when the third TC went up, and now it's at 3 minutes and 50 seconds. Huh? Will be... A, uh, won't be that much higher, oh, though. Oh, God! Another demo! It's 14 Navy against 8. And I'm liking Admiral's position more and more here. He's sitting at 2 TCs versus 3 TCs, though, so... Well, with 12 more villagers right now, no, he won't mind this one too much. No real buildings, no one really picking up any relics. Get some nice front control, and then gets ugly for purple to get some good engagements if he loses those two dogs at the front. Yeah, personally, while I agree that the water meta is more, more balanced in 1v1s than ever, um, <laughs> it's actually really annoying to play in these situations because you're in Admiral's position and you think, oh, I'm going to destroy him. I've got... 11 units out here and then one or two cheeky demos can flatten you so you really just have to be cautious i think the smart play is to switch into like, some galleys to snipe those nilly but usually players just micro their fires until end why is master of templar adding the university and the monastery that early he had like a hundred food a hundred gold mm. and just rushing them out with multiple villagers is that a bit of a debate <laughs> to make the enemy think? No, no, no. The enemy can't even see it. Huh. I think that he realizes this is a race to imp at this point. So maybe just made the buildings. It's a bit like that one thing you referenced earlier. As you see the market being used now. Like making the stables before you have the farms for light calf. Maybe it's making the buildings for imp before you have the resources for it. Uh, actually idling the town centers now too, Nilly. So not producing bills out of the TCs intentionally. So he could click up to the Imperial Age. Okay, okay. Well, let's see. Still some resources missing, as you mentioned earlier. Cheaper for Italians, though. Demo in the center trades of one for one again. But full map control for our Portuguese player. I really like the fact... I'm not saying the situation's good for Master of the Templar. But I really like the fact that he idled his TCs there. Because if he didn't do that, he would probably have very similar imp times to Admiral. And then Admiral would still have more eco than him and more water control. Here, your best way to come back is to get a tech switch in on water. And with Italians, that's normally going fast fires, which is quite cheap for them. So I think the back docking and, and what we're going to see here from Master Templar is probably his best chance to come back here. Is this the moment where Admiral should switch into Galleons? No, because fast fires is probably what Italians go for. I think... No, but he's the Portuguese player. And he has so much map control, right? Yeah, maybe. He can match maybe. them up. Well, I see he's making war galleys now, so I'm going to retract that statement and say yes, of course. <laughs> Obviously. I mean, come on. Um, who, why wouldn't you? 
Uh, you could control a lot at the front and also if you fight at those narrow areas at the top, obviously having the bigger range really helps you out. By the way, Master of Templar, housed again. Housed again. Okay, so we think this might be MBL here playing at Master of Templar, but I have a question uh, that's not quite as specific. Are we looking at two players who are in the top eight right here? Or too soon to tell? Well, it, one winner will be in the top eight. <laughs> Come you know what I meant, man. Ah, you meant skill wise, Top eight, from, to top eight okay. from Hidden Cup 3, which meant top eight meant invited players. Players we did not okay. see in the qualifier. Um, I'm not sure about Admiral, honestly. I think there's a lot of clean stuff that's happening, but also the qualifiers were so good. Yeah, right? that's the thing. Just think about who came through. Like, Jordan could play like this, yep. Les could play like this. True. And that's, I think it's the beauty of it, right? I don't think we would have been saying that. Snack. Snack. Oh! Snack. <laughs> oh my god! That was crazy, man. The the monk just grabbed the relic and then hopped into the transport ship, but also I think blocked the dock foundation there. That was funny. Doinked it. All right. So I'm going to switch over to the total KD at the bottom left. Now you can see that Sunshin has two relics. That'll make it three. Um, and there's also relic in the middle island, which would make it four. Ooh, lots of demos. This is not a player who's confident on water. This is as Hera said when I was casting with him. Make stuff and send it, you know? Just hope for the best. I don't think this is going to really pan out too well for Master. Who's the guy who sneaks relics away from opponent's islands? Viper? Smart. I think all smart water players would do that, right? I don't think... Okay, okay, okay. You know, like, I and and Viper would, of course, fall into that, that list. Uh, as the demos land against a few galleons, I guess that's okay, but... Man, is that a lot of galleons. And fast fire's now coming in. I think the Master of the Templar got a time window to do damage here, but it is closing. An Admiral might need to go into heavy demolition ship. I'd really like to see that. Uh, yeah, some people think Portuguese, uh, let's go Caravals, but Caravals actually get less attack bonus against other ships, so they do less damage against the fire ships, mm -hmm. only one actually arriving, so would be a horrible choice. Oh, a transporter, Tristan. Yeah, transport. Now, the villagers could survive, and they could drop a castle there. Sometimes there's not space in this island for a castle. I believe that's the play for Admiral, but Admiral just doesn't have the resources yet. Not sure if I agree with that house location. I'm not sure I agree without adding demos either. I think demos are important here. It doesn't seem like Admiral has the resources yet, but I think still will have the numbers. Even converting a fire ship is helpful. Oh, yeah. Some monk edition there is absolutely underappreciated in those scenarios. And look at how clumped up the galleons are now. How do yep. you even engage into that? Exactly. Fast fires are supposed to get control, but Admiral was ahead, and Admiral with 40 military against 16... Chemistry now on the way. Sure, the fast fires do survive, but they also dying quite quickly here. And this is in a Civ matchup where Italians have all the bonuses going for them early. It's cheaper techs, cheaper to advance to the next age, cheaper fishing ships. But if you let it get to a certain point, Portuguese are the superior Civ of the two with uh, the Galleons and the Demos and then the Fatorias and then all the Relics in this case. Looking brutal for Master of Templar, but Master of Templar is not going to go down without a fight. He's going to drop castles on the shoreline. Oh, yeah. Double castle drop even. Traps, I think, could reach that castle. But, well, will be tough times. And look at that. Heated shot. An upgrade that we don't see too often. Wow, okay. Heated shot. That's, that's an important upgrade, too. <laughs> be very helpful. You can tell Admiral realizes the need for demos, just hiding them for now. Doesn't even need the demos, actually. What am I talking about? These fire ships are melting. Now, uh, well, once you mess up that number of galleons here, 43 already, that uh, becomes really tricky. Honestly, I think even... <laughs> no, Bombard Cannons, you can't build another Siege Workshop there. But just get that relic in the center, please. Just, just a name? Like, remember, everything that's gone down here... Um... Or two names that come to mind, I suppose. Game one, Admiral didn't realize that there was no restart, which made me think it could have been a player who qualified. Mm -hmm. Winchester and Jordan both picked islands a lot in the qualifier, and I think were undefeated on islands as well. So just names to think of that are outside of that top eight. But I love mm -hmm. the castle position for Admiral, and Admiral is... 
50 population ahead at this point. Do you make a Victoria here, or do you say forget about it because you have the lead? Well, I just looked next to the main TC. Okay. All right, there's your answer. One Fatoria. Now, this costs 250 stone and 250 gold, but it brings you a trickle of resources. Here comes the heavy demolition ships, and heavy demos are so strong. And this is exactly what Admiral needs. And even if this castle goes down in the middle, I think Admiral will still be very happy with the fact that that gold's being mined right now. Cannon Galley, ca Cannon Galley is the only thing that's really missing, now diving in for those traps. Even if you lose like f 10 Galleons, you're totally fine if you kill all those yep. three traps. Just such a crucial area of yeah. the map. Yeah, I think at this point, Master the Templar has shown he's inexperienced on islands. Uh, when YOLO with the fast castle build, when YOLO patrolling demos forward, and, and even more YOLO to try and treb down the middle, and this is getting to that point, as you see Admiral send the Monk to the middle to get Relic number 5. Actually, wait, that'd be Relic number 4. Is he missing one? Oh, I guess he didn't get both from the enemy island, duh. Um, but yeah, I think it's getting to the point where Master of the Templar is just not going to have anything. <laughs> Pop 109, indeed. Some docks in the back. Resource is not looking too hot. And what's the, what's the winning condition? As you mentioned earlier, Portuguese, they win the late game as well. Yeah. It's, it is kind of weird. If you look at how Master of the Templar is playing, it almost feels like he's Portuguese. <laughs> you know, like trying to <laughs> wait for Vitoria to give him resources. But uh, my friend, you're just going to mine through and chop through everything here. And you're up against Relics and Vitoria. So I just don't see this ever working out. Um, I have called some players uh, stubborn. I've, I've called one in particular Cockroach over the years. Because Ooh. they uh, are very good at staying alive and coming back. They never die. So maybe if it's not MBL, someone embracing their inner MBL to try and stay in this series. Well, the Asians, like especially mm -hmm. Vivi, Yo, they try to stay in games oh, yeah. for quite some time. Demos intercepted nicely as well. Yeah, and, and really you should, again, as, as we'll have to restate, because I think it's so easy for viewers to say, Oh, what is the Nino is dead? Like, why aren't you saying, oh, why aren't you fighting on longer for this biggest tournament with prize pool in 20 years, you know? But anyways, the GG, of course, is called right when I say that. And Nilly, I, I look at the level of these two. They're certainly closer than the first best of five today. And it mm -hmm. almost feels like in some ways a little bit higher than that first best of five. But we still can't quite put our finger on it. But Admiral Yi Sun Shin was prepared for islands don't think Master of the Templar was. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting more and more MBL vibes here. Admiral Yishan, uh, could it be maybe someone like Nikov? Someone we didn't maybe. really mention that, that really likes islands, is really good at demos, fire ships, then did a nice adjustment strategy-wise. He he clearly was very experienced. I think he, he is a player that played every single Hidden Cup. Bold prediction. Yeah, okay. But we'll see. You know what's interesting, though? Uh, we'll look through the stats. Is that Admiral Yi Sun Shin did not look prepared for Mudflow. So it, the home maps have really made a difference in the series so far. And if that's the case, Master of the Templar probably will have something prepared for the next one. Uh, but you can see here, Admiral, with more wood, more gold. Uh, was lacking in some other areas, but didn't really matter. You can see how, how huge the military force was for him throughout the game. Really like the way that Admiral was able to adapt to the fast castle strategy from the enemy. Hold on. The water micer was solid too nilly. No real question marks over Admiral's water play. I loved it. Which They're is how it controlled. should be. Like, Admiral is a turtle ship after all. <laughs> That's how it should be. <laughs> all right, man. Master of Templar. Gold Rush has to be his next map. And... What other maps? High tides. Boy, I'm not sure what's good on high tides for Master of Templar here. Um, uh, I'm thinking. Well, honestly, what are we playing against Japanese? Probably Mayans. Wait, on if if it comes to high tides, game five, I would say. Yeah, I would say Celt is reasonable, right? Against Japanese. I, I mean, it's not ideal, but I'd still say it's it's somewhat reasonable, at least. 
it, it's probably better than Berbers and Mayans. I feel like Berbers and Mayans fit Gold Rush quite well. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious, actually, Tatars and Britons also fit Gold Rush quite well for Admiral. So any any guesses here on how you would approach it as far as the Civ picks go? I think you're playing an Archer Civ. I don't want to have Celts against Britons or Tatars. So I go Berbers and Mayans. I think I will ignore Celts for the next two maps. And then probably Berbers, Gold Rush, Mayans on high tides. Wow. Well, day one of Hidden Cup 4, we are uh, less than 250 subs away from the total prize pool getting to $77,000. Thank you, everybody. And appreciate you being here. Nilly, game four. Let's find out if Master of the Templar can tie up this series. Now, this is a pretty big moment in Hidden Cup because we've been talking all day about how we believe... Okay, Capture Rage is working for me. Wonderful. How we believe that Master of the Templar could be one of the biggest names that we've seen in Hidden Cups. Like, MBL made it to Hidden Cup 1 finals. Lost to Viper. Made it to Hidden Cup 2 semifinals. Losing to Viper. And then in Hidden Cup 3, uh, lost in the quarterfinals 3-2 to Dogao. So, MBL is the second best performing player in Hidden Cups if you add up all the rankings. Mm. <laughs> so that would be a pretty big deal if Master of the Templar is indeed MBL and if he were to lose one more game. But Admiral Yi, you're playing as the Britons now. And then far, far away in the north is Master of the Templar playing as the Berbers. I love this matchup. Yeah. It's pretty clear what they are going for, but somehow the the small, tiny aspects, how many crosses are you getting out, when are you trying to go into pikemen, is so interesting to me. Obviously, Britons, one extra range for their crossbows, faster working archery ranges, and cheaper TCs, just designed to go for a massive army of crossbows. On the other side, Berbers, cheaper knights, feels very standard for them. Not sure if they go for the full meta, but I would love to see it. Yeah, um, I think the, the most interesting thing for me because it, we, we just talked about Castle Age. Pikemen, Knights, Crossbows. Those are the words you said. How do you mm -hmm. get there, Nilly? Some people will go for Scouts. Some people will just wall their base. Some people will go for, for a Drush. We've even seen players make a Barracks, make a Militia, and then round up all the Wolves and woo-woo-woo the enemy. There's a lot of options there, so it's not a so clear-cut. Do you have like an idea of how players might want to approach it? Um... I think Admiral's map feels a bit too open to the front to go for the Drush FC. Okay. So I probably want to see him play something in Feudal Age. Pushes one deer and then goes over there to get a good idea. On the other side, Master of Templar's map feels very wallable. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Drush Fast Castle, maybe Direct Fast Castle. Nearly, I think everyone knows that I'm a, I'm a noob caster here. So I'm going to... Um... I gotta. I have to pause it slightly just to uh, put round to sixteen here. People have been telling me all day, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'll get it for the next set." There we go. We're back in business. Uh, seems like the game is even caught up. So, um, okay, I like that. I mean, it really is not the best gold rush map I've ever seen for Admiral. I guess with some walling, you've still got to save gold, but it'd be better. Look at Purple's walling. Hmm. If I, if I was a betting man, which I'm obviously not. Didn't you play poker for a living for like a hey, decade? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this looks so much like an MBL base. Oh, oh, what a play! Triple gate, baby! Oh my god! And this is a player who's behind right now. We don't want this player to lose. Oh my word, what a play that was. That was beautiful. Sick one. That's that's Very huge good. because now Admiral can't scout that it's full wall. Admiral can't mm -hmm. scout what the enemy's doing, and so it might lead Admiral to, to feel the need to get military on the field and be very aggressive. Uh, it's going to be a drush fast castle from him. Okay. Look at that. It is the barracks before the mill, and I don't think on gold rush you typically play a drush into feudal age army, so feels very much like that one. Something we have to check, very left-hand side of Master of Templar space. Is that open between the wood lines? It is, yes. And that's something that with the scout you should check. Um, let me just double-check the scouting for Master. Master could see that. Unless Master doesn't have a small tree mod, that's something that Master could easily plug. 
I can understand maybe assuming they're nilly, but at a high level, you should always double and trickle, triple, not trickle, sorry, trickle treb, triple check those things. Mm, Admiral here, sending only one militia. Please don't tell me you wanted to wolf rush, because that would have been such a bad preparation. Yeah. And why is that nilly? I know, but the viewers want to know. The viewers want to know, because in typical Gold Rush, all the wolves spawn on that hill in the center. But T90 and his crew did design the map that in front of your base, there are no wolves spawning. So that you have a clear pass towards your opponent. So if you want to pick up the wolves for the wolf rush, you have to go at the site. I feel like that was... He sounds welcome. so much like a salesman right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Make sure trying... to follow, like, and subscribe. <laughs> Yes, yeah, like it's like you're trying to sell people on Gold Rush, you know, and and actually this week and, it's ten percent off. The hidden cup main event, 18th till 21st. Are you are you mocking me right now? Come I'm on, Twitch man. TV. All right, here's a little. Tonight official. <laughs> All right, I think we've got enough what promotion. Co casters. We, we don't listen. If we get any more promotion, I'm gonna have Nearly to shave my head. All right, so we could just stop with that. Thank you. Slam. And I guess all Dash. the militia is gonna do at this point. I'm ready, and Dave. To, I'm ready to kick you out of here, Nilly. <laughs> Obviously joking, but kind of not. For the biggest prize pool. <sighs> the militia is guarding the gold, and this will be Fast Castle for Master of the Templar, who's made a mill on the ostrich, and that one zebra. So lots of food income. But do you think that Master will have the resources to even go up to the next stage when he gets to fuel? Uh, he clearly needs to drop more farms but this is just an opening with some scouts here so it's just map control three scouts out and okay. just survive he probably is pretty confident in the cast edge play of Berbers. i'm not a massive fan of going up so late to add scouts because the enemy's going to be walled though so i'd almost mm -hmm. prefer you just go full wall fastish feudal age and go for a lot of farms but okay okay I, maybe he skips the stable here i'm curious i actually think it it's not that scouts are a mistake for map control but i think it doesn't benefit you right now because there's nothing out there so i'd say maybe go for yeah the eco upgrade skip the stable and um then make scouts later on into eventual knights and for admiral interesting farms saving the straggler trees mm -hmm. 95 and 76 wood left there. Okay. It's just, it's not a bad the idea. Three to... Maybe he's a vegan. A vegan who just ate ostrich? No, he, he loves trees so much and tries to save the trees as well. Oh, I see. All right. All right. Environmental. And you know what? That's a stretch, but I like how you're making people think right now. That's what we brought you in for. You know, it is important to have the straggler trees for this stage of the game. So you could chop wood and then pull them off to build farms. And it does seem like the resources are going to be there for Admiral. Pretty clean builds. I also like how it was just one militia, nearly. The wolf rush could have been more exciting for viewers. Mm -hmm. But he didn't invest a lot. And now he'll be able to go for archer range blacksmith. And with Britons, that's what it's all about. Getting to castle age, getting archer numbers. And then you can control this very big middle area. Also, I love the adjustment. Normally, if you rush FC, you want to put four on gold, but he only built one militia, so three on gold there. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, do you even add a second archery range here, or do you rely on the faster production of Britons and try to add TCs first? So, obviously, it depends on the player and the preference and all of that. Um, I... Okay, Master of the Templar says question mark server. Which means maybe there was there was an issue of lag or something. He's asking in the middle of the game. Now they say should be UK West. And now Master of the Templar <laughs> says no, don't say. Never mind. It's lag. What is wrong with the seventy thousand dollar tournament, people? I mean, not that I like. We have a list of of like I was able to see which servers were used for all the sets in Hidden Cup Three after the fact. Mm -hmm. Admiral says it's lagging for them as well. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, we get to see their discussion now. Because oh, it's a I love how 31,000 people now are pulling their globes out and like, okay, the UK West server, if he is living here, who could he face? <laughs> and then people are like marking and all red dots about around their globes trying to figure out who could uh, the players be. I know. And you know what? There's no problem with that, right? Because 
Um, I the way Robo does it is he he basically obviously there's like one or two servers which, which work best for the players. He chooses like one of those two, not always the best one, uh, just to keep people on their toes a little bit. Of course, keeping fairness in mind and all that good stuff. But Nilly, uh, we're seeing one archery range for Admiral, and I think Admiral will try and take advantage of the cheap Britain TCs. And uh, we might see a TC. Now, do you think you should TC the middle right away or maybe stay at home? I think you have to stay at home. Your opponent could go for knights and then it will be so, so tricky for you. Okay. I'm sure Microsoft Server loves to room see that. Shot. Yeah, I'm sure Microsoft's like, we're not going to give T90 any money for Hidden Cup 5. Thanks for that, Ducks. Appreciate it. Wait a second. Double range from Master of the Templar? This is not expected. Is he going to go Genitors? Ah, uh, he is certainly uh, mixing. That could be Hera. Did Hera say that he wanted to play more genitors? He did mention it. I've, I've heard Leary talk about it too, but there's one thing in particular that Hera said. He said, if you see a genitor sit in the corner of the map in Hidden Cup 4, and he said he would do it, that it's him. Now, I don't think he's going to do it personally. Maybe if it's in like the final or something and we already think it's Hera, maybe he'll do it, but... Genitor opening, Nilly. The meta is evolving everywhere. I don't think Admiral's expecting this at all. Okay, let's see if the Genitors can do how they're named and try to clean up that army. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the Genitor for a moment. A uh, Genitor is a mobile skirmisher. It is pretty expensive and it's unique to the Berbers. So, uh, with the second armor upgrade already completed, these things are not going to take any damage. Well, they'll take one damage from a crossbow. And this really is great against Britons, I feel, at this stage of the game. Because Britons are all about that mass. So, you eliminate that mass from the equation. And then they have to switch into something else. They don't really do well with anything else, right? Their infantry is good, but their knights are not so good. Their siege is not so good. So... I'm curious to see what develops now, because I think on paper the counter is going to knights now. Hmm, maybe just sit back, economy. Like, Gentiles are not really the unit that can threaten your walls and your villagers too much. True. Maybe Admiral just sits back. Doesn't have the great main gold spot, though. But then in Castle Age, late Castle Age, if you get to, like, four mangonels and 20 crossbow, you can easily deal with double archer range play. Yeah. I think this is a big mistake for Master. How did he not find those crossbows? He knew they were there. I, I don't... I mean, you can just patrol them every which way and separate them, and surely you're going to find them out there. I mean, that... It's just four crossbowmen, but I feel like every little bit counts. I'm mm -hmm. a little surprised to see that he was unable to use his mobility and his tankiness to, to track I think he down. didn't have the line of sight. The crossbow were even shooting, but he... Yeah, just passed them. And now we see a market at the side. That's an interesting one. Is Edmar trying to buy himself a fourth TC? You think maybe a hundred stone and then build the TC in the middle? Maybe. It's a very boomy game. Both players on three TCs. And we, we saw a lot of gold rush in the qualifier. And we saw almost every player in the qualifier do a lot more to take map control than these two have. Is there a chance that we see Winchester in a draft without Goth? Definitely, yeah. Definitely, I mean, he has picked Goths before. You're thinking that, that maybe Admiral is Winchester. Ah, oh, well, more of Master of Templar now with the Skirm play. Hmm, okay. Uh, mm. Like the Genitor play. All right. I, you know what I'm excited for is to see what people put in, in the extension, which might be live right now, Twitch. I actually didn't hear word. Uh, but we do have an extension below the stream where the community can input their guesses after each set on who they think they're watching. You know, it could be like a 300 IQ move to open Genitor, force Britons into Knights, and then just go for cheap camels with Berbers. This is not awful. Oh, uh, more like the cheap Knights, right? You probably wouldn't want to go camels when there's crossbows out there, yeah. Hmm. And I, I like the position of Master of Templar way more right now. Mm -hmm. Like 4cc, not really expanding. What are we doing now? Some knights? When, when is our Britain player really getting onto more gold? That'd be tricky. I think he probably is going to add a second stable here. That would be my guess. Rather surprised it hasn't come in yet. But I think he could push out soon. 
Uh, Tristan delayed Wolf Rush at the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> woo 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 woo. It'd be funny if wolves attacked monks. Actually, Master, convert that. Yay. Convert the spearmen and send the wolves back to the enemy. <laughs> Come on. Oh! Here we go! And now heal the spearmen so it doesn't die. Ah, sad times. All right, well, woo woo woo. <laughs> no, uh, sad times, slow. It's like, woo woo woo. <laughs> Oh, that was that was pretty accurate, Nilly. Not that I've heard many wolves die IRL. I stay in my room most of the time, but I've watched a few nature shows from time to time. So, do you, do you switch into something other than genitors if you're Berbers? Because I, I haven't seen it yet. Well, I see extra stables being added in the center, and I love that. I think massive cast edge play makes so much sense, right? You control the gold at the front there, and you simply know that Admiral, he, he can't really expand from here. Yeah. I don't like this play strategically. Like, how? what's his plan? How does he think this game looks like in three minutes, in five minutes? I think... I don't know, man. I'm looking at his eco. I think there's potential. You know, the, the Genitors are so bad against Knights... That if you like the big thing about Genitor's mobility and tankiness, and now you see a Maganel from Master of the Templar. What does that accomplish against knights? Nothing. So everything that's on the front right now gets countered by knights, and Admiral is gonna have six with chain barding armor. I'm not seeing the upgrades and the numbers of cav units yet for Master of the Templar to make me think that these buildings aren't just gonna get mopped up here in a second. Uh, how many camels will he need probably the same number as knight simply because he has so few upgrades now an outpost to get some more vision tries to get a better idea of what's lurking behind the walls maybe sending the monks to the front could help out as well yeah and, and also he didn't know the stables were there he could have seen them didn't know that he hasn't hit the stone on the left or the stone on the right but camels and genitors and maganel against just britain knights let's see how this engagement goes of course now crossbowmen have some freedom to finally move out, and I think that this is a fight where Admirals, he's going to love his spot. The Genitors, as we see Wolves running around as well, not contributing much anymore. I would say Master Templar is loving his spot. He now Ooh. sees, I forced my opponent into into Knights, in, into knights yeah. as Britons, yeah, and he still doesn't have control over the gold. If yeah. I just go mass castle edge here, I win this game. Now let's see. Let's see. Let's see if Admiral thinks of some type of a switch, right? Because you're definitely spot on as far as the comp. And I see now that the infantry armor upgrades are coming in, Nilly. Woo woo woo, by the way. And so maybe you go Knight Pikeman with crossbow. Do you see three different things from the Britain player? Oh, so untypical. But maybe in answer to all the stables that should be coming up here, Skirm should just deal with the crossbow. I think just four or five stables of master and templar and he should control the gold till the end of the yeah. game yeah I, i'm with you on that i think just talking about how what composition the civs tend to excel with genitor with cheap knights and camels uh, as we see master of templar get housed uh, it just feels a lot stronger <laughs> than having to do anything but having a base of crossbowmen and and the crossbowmen that are in the middle might go down right now also look look at what upgrades you need to do he gets one attack two defense one defense one attack like if you go for three different units it's so tricky mangonels oh good shots there of course the mangonels will go down and i think we're about to see a castle in the middle okay this is this is a bit safer for admiral just to protect that four tile gold which he's not been able to take all game Oh, how? Yeah, now his other three tile is running dry. Camels moving forward. There's still five camels in that stable. Ooh. Can you really stop a castle with camels and janitor, though? I don't know. The amount of pikemen makes this extremely awkward for Master of Templar to stop. Pikemen was yeah. a great play from Admiral, and Admiral's actually going to click up to Imp. What in the world? Sick, sick play. Well, he had the better economy all game long, right? We just felt... The gold transition shouldn't really be for him, but Master of Templar didn't really mess up the numbers. And now Camels aren't doing too much against this. Yeah, the, the Pikeman Knight play, it's doing a solid job. Now, Genitors will take out the Pikeman, the Camels will take out the Knights. Now, the big issue for Admiral is the enemy knows exactly what's happening. When you build a castle like that, normally that means you're on the way to Imp. The Master is going to idle those TCs, I'm sure, stop producing units click up to imp himself and with that hill position in the middle it could be just what master of the templar needs to give himself time and just deny the gold which is what gold rush is all about 
Yeah, and the castle that our Britain player was forced into is just so defensive that he doesn't really con protect any of the gold in the center. So, yeah. yeah, heavily on his four tiles, but those will run out in like 10 minutes or something as well. Even less. In my experience, Berbers have struggled big time against Halb Ram. Now, Britons do not get Siege Ram. So again, it's a situation where you're fighting with something that's not ideal. But I think the composition here is Halberdier and Ram, and we're seeing more Siege Workshops now. And the counter to that could honestly be something like, I don't know, do you go champion if you're in master's position? Or do you just go like maybe siege behind your yep. castle? Actually, champions is heavily unappreciated with Berbers because the typical composition simply is Ram, Halberdier against Berbers. Oh my but... god. They could just go for it. This raid, the knight's getting value. Master's focus on the middle, and Admiral says, worry about your stone. But actually, don't, because there's nothing at the stone anymore. Oh, man. It was right after a pause as well. And you could see that the players had, uh, had paused there. It was actually Master who had done so. And so he didn't react at all. This is the chat from earlier in the game, which I paged up to my bad. And now we have some house walls from Master, but Master... Behind in villagers, behind to the Imperial Age, Nilly, heavily behind in score, as as both players will have two castles. The big question is, can we get to Warwolf? Can we get to Bombard Cannons? Those are the winning tech slash units in those trap wars. Hill advantage, obviously massive for Master of Templar. Neither player with the masonry. I'm a bit sad. Master of Templar seems like a, a big name, right? And even if you don't think it's MBL, you might be thinking this is a player who is at the top of the list as far as players expected to do well. Admiral I have less guesses on, but Admiral has looked really good. I think back to Game 1 Arabia. I think back to this 190 population nearly. And we have capped rams with halberdiers. The halberdiers are inside of the rams and they're pushing up the hill. Will this be enough? Uh oh, one mangonel, not enough there. You want to have like three, four mangonels or maybe them walled in. Trap even coming out, that's dangerous. Wow. Oh, the Treb is right next to that, but the Halberdiers are going to hop out of the Rams. There's Trebs behind this. I don't have confidence that Master of Templar can keep these castles up. Champions is the unit to go for. Or maybe you can't get the upgrades, but long swords alone, so good against Rams or the Harbor DS here. Mm -hmm. Castles are about to fall. This is perfect play from Admiral. The, the game sense to understand, forget about archers if you're going to play like this. Let's go Halb and Ram. Even though it doesn't necessarily suit my Civ, it suits the situation. This is quality, and I feel even if Master of Templar takes out the Rams, the Trebs are behind this, Nilly. So, well, there are no castles left anyways. Yeah. Four traps there doing such a good job. Harvard has pushed in forward. Longbowman at it as well. Wow. And yeah, now you could start to mix in some Longbowman if champions were to come out. And Master of the Templar gets 3 one by Admiral Yi Sun Shin. What a performance, Nilly. One of the more unique Gold Rush games we've honestly seen in, in the event so far, of course. But the qualifier, too. I'm, I'm just impressed that was really solid play no gold control and then got the castle up and that little gold that he could use obviously they didn't build a lot of army right so your gold relatively is lasting longer but that was a nice push master of templar didn't really know what was coming wow let's look to the, st the statistics here i can't help but think back to master of the templar not scouting the knights when he had full control Maybe the champion switch was still an option there. Uh, but you can see in terms of the, the KD, it was actually pretty even. I think it would not have continued to be the same. Overall, the TCs and the economy seem to be a lot stronger for Admiral, collecting a lot more wood, a lot more food. Uh, it's funny, man, on Gold Rush, how important it is to have food and wood as well. Look at that. Like Master of Templar had 3,000 more gold, and it still didn't matter. It's ridiculous. Well, Harbadiers are pretty cheap on the gold end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's every gold unit that Berbers have is pretty well countered by by Britons. Either the um, the Camel Archer, which is probably not an option because it doesn't have the range to compete with Britain range, and then also the the Knights, which we talked about. 